there welcome to inquiring minds my name is doug and i'm back with today's fountain pen review this hongdian d5 hongdian asked me if i would care to review this new model d5 fountain pen of course i agreed as i've been impressed with hongdian's quality especially their n6 and n7 piston filler models this ornate and hefty metal piston filler has intricate designs inspired by the chinese qin dynasty which was the first Chinese dynasty that unified the various Chinese states from 221 to 206 BCE. Hongdian provided me with a link to their Amazon store where you can purchase one of the four colorways of this pen for $52.95 plus shipping US. They also have a video commercial promoting the pen. Now I want another one of those so I can use them as drumsticks for those awesome beats. There's a lot going on with this fountain pen, so let's take a look at it right now. When people told me that Chinese pen manufacturers were watching my channel and responding to the critiques that I've done of their pens, I used to go pish posh. Oh, what a frightfully witty song. Marvelous. But uh, the proof is in the pudding because when I'm contacted by a Chinese pen manufacturer to review a new pen, then I say, well, they must be watching. So this package has just arrived and I was contacted by Hongdian to review this pen. So let's take a look. I think it's a pen in a box. Indeed, Hongdian. No other indication of what it is. Well, there's an upscale box. Looks just like a Pelican box. That gold tone and the sliding drawer. And here's the pen. And it has a Hongdian wrench with it. Very nice indeed. And some documentation, instructions for use. Let's see if there's English. We have Chinese. Yep, and English. Good for you, Hongdian. And here's the pen. Take it out of its condom. And here it is. This is the Hongdian D5. It is a hefty size, very ornate black and gold. They gave me a choice and I chose this black and gold one. Very, very ornate indeed. And with this wrench, I'm assuming it's a piston filler. And there's the number six size fine steel nib. I think that's a plastic feed. Looks a bit ebonite-ish. And there's the piston. So that piston wrench will fit right in there. There's a couple of divots right down there. We'll take this pen apart see if the section comes off nope see if it posts it does post and it doesn't post on top of the knob which is a good thing and it's plastic on that end when it posts so you're soft plastic so it actually posts very securely but it's a very long pen but an interesting section metal section with those checkerboard pattern stamped or engraved into it makes it very grippy nice in the hand so she'll find some ink for this pen and then do a review i'll show the parts and features of this pen some size comparisons and measurements and then provide a writing sample then i'll talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen 
Some may look at this pen and claim it is over the top ornate, but I think it's extremely well done. Yes, it is ornate, but the ornamentation is balanced, well thought out, and very attractive in my opinion. It's nothing like some of the gaudier Chinese pen designs from Jinhao, like the Dragon Phoenix series, for example, and Mont Blanc's Orient Express or Monte Grappa's Game of Thrones, both of which could be considered slightly over the top, certainly in terms of price. Hongdian says their design of the D5 is based on armor from the Qin Dynasty. And if you look at the overall patterns and not get lost in the frou-frou of the ornamentation, you can see the design of the body armor on the barrel and the helmet design on the cap. That crossbow clip forms the nose piece and the black area sets out the eyes with intricate filigree work up the back of the helmet. That's what I see anyway. In each of the color options, I think it makes for a stunning presentation. From the top, we see the flat, ornately embossed finial. The edge of the top is fluted, and it's straight down to the end of the cap. And the cap starts with a ring of small Greek key patterns. And these ornate designs are not just relegated to the gold sections. You can see the embossing in the dark black areas as well, making an intricate brocade of patterns. These designs, Hong Dian tells us, are derived from archaeological finds from the Qin dynasty. The shoulders, which could be the shoulder shields of the armor, are particularly fascinating. And look at how that swooping line of the crossbow bolt clip is mirrored under the clip itself. Really great attention to detail. The end of the cap has a raised band with a couple of Chinese characters or glyphs right in the center. The clip extends from the cap and is nicely springy and usable. The shape of the clip is very elegant and the shaft and the arrowhead are inlaid with black enamel as well. Nice touch. And there's a Chinese glyph or a character in the center of that arrowhead. Superb workmanship here. There's a tiny step down from the cap to the barrel and the barrel is straight for its length. There are three bands of black enamel and two bands of gold. The black bands have square patterns evoking the plates of body armor, and the gold bands have two different geometric patterns, one with a lattice work and one with a series of rectangles. And at the top of the barrel, under the cap, right there, is a small ink window that would be invisible if you didn't know it was there. The barrel ends at the blind cap, which is richly patterned and tapers down slightly. The bottom of the blind cap has a square embossed in it and two Chinese characters or glyphs. The cap unscrews with one full turn to reveal the long tapering gold metal section that has a slight flare towards the number six size steel fine nib and black plastic feed. The section has an embossed pattern that echoes the barrel's square armor plating and is in a brushed metal texture. I don't find it slippery at all and it's very comfortable in the hand. Let's look more closely at this nib. It has more chin designs embossed and then 1997, the Hongdian logo, F for fine and Hongdian. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or swapping, and the section doesn't unscrew. The inside of the cap is lined with a black plastic cap liner that also incorporates the cap threads. The cap posts, not very deeply, but securely, into that plastic cap liner. And contrary to what I thought in the unboxing, the cap does post on the top of that piston knob, so you have to be careful not to turn that cap when it's posted or it will inject ink. Not that you'd want to write with this pen posted in any event, as it makes the pen very long and unbalanced. Unposted, the pen is nicely balanced and very comfortable. The pen is available in four color combinations, black with gold, green and red with gold, black and red with silver, and red with silver. And the nibs available are extra fine and fine. The Amazon link has the pens priced at $52.99 US plus shipping, but you can also purchase them on AliExpress for $43 and Etsy for $49, so shop around. You can also get the pen with a 14 karat gold nib if you want for $186 US. Before I inked the pen, I took it apart to show you how to disassemble it. 
Let's see that video now, followed by some size comparisons. Before I fill this pen, I'm going to take it apart and we'll see what its uh, capacity is and how it comes apart with the wrench that they sent with it. So first, let's take the nib unit out. Should unscrew, and that it does. Standard Hongdu number six size nib unit, plastic feed. We see there's a small silicone o-ring right there and a very small one right there. Don't miss those. You might have some flow issues if you don't have those silicone rings and the section doesn't come off. But the piston opens. We can take the wrench that was supplied with the pen and line it up with those little notches. And those notches are a good thing. So that's bonus notches. Sorry. I'm going to hold on to the wrench and turn the barrel and we'll see which way it wants to go. Okay, so it's a Lefty Lucy. Some of these are right hand thread. This is a Lefty Lucy righty tighty typical thread. I've just tightened that piston knob down on top of the wrench so it stays on there nice and tight just like that. There's no reason to take that wrench off because you put it right back in again. And there's no reason to further disassemble this. You can. It's maddening process of trying to get it back together again so that it closes. So that's another reason why I leave that on the wrench. I was going to put some silicone grease on this. This is uh, stuff that comes from Twisby. And that would work. Just put it on those rings right there. There we go. Just a little drop. Run around with my finger. And then with the wrench still attached, slide it back in again and then we're going to righty tighty and then just hold the wrench and turn the barrel just slightly and run that piston up and down there a few times to get that silicone grease moving and it's moving very nicely we can put our nib back in and again just tighten it down hand tight and we're good to go the next thing i want to do before i ink this up is to measure its weight because then once I've filled it I can see what the ink capacity is. So it's 53.7 grams. Now we're going to fill the pen with some Jet Urbain Stormy Gray which has an, is a nice charcoal black with gold shimmer which I think black and gold it's a perfect match. Open up the piston, see whether our barrel will actually go down through the end. It does. Very tiny barrel on this Jet Urbain bottle. So that bottle is not deep enough to fill this pen. You can see it only comes up to there. So there's a couple of things I can do. When you run into a short bottle and you've got a piston filler, you can use the Peniter pen filler. But my Peniter pen filler still has ink in it. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use a little spring syringe to suck up some ink and I'm going to go in through the front. These are really handy little items. It's hard to do this over the camera but you have to look down the barrel to see whether you're full or not. Screw this back down and hope that I've not overfilled it because it'll squirt all over the place. There. Now I'm going to dip the pen as well just to make sure I've got some ink on that feed. And there we go. So let's weigh this pen again now that it's absolutely full of ink. And we get 55.4. And full it was. 53.7 so that's 1.7 milliliters of ink pretty good and here is the Hongdian D5 Qin Dynasty with a fully when ancient civilizations a Delta DV2 a Hongdian N7 and a Hongdian N6 and these are all piston fillers with the exception of the fully when now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. They all post securely with only the Hongdian N7 and N6 being usable posted. The others become very long. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. 
the Delta has a removable blind cap to access the piston knob. I'm finding this to be very, very useful because to get some pens to write, you need to charge or flood that feed. With a piston filler, you turn that piston knob and then turn it back again. With the Delta, however, you take off the blind cap, turn the piston knob, get some ink flowing into that feed, and then you can just leave it there and put the blind cap back on again. Somewhat similar to a cartridge converter. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian D5, and it has a number six size steel fine nib. Now, before I continue with this writing sample, I want to show you the first writing that I did after I filled the pen on camera. I cleaned this pen out first before I'd inked it. Especially down here you can see that I'm getting lots of baby's bottom. See it's hardly making a line because there's so much baby's bottom and it's almost impossible to write with and it's borderline scratchy as well right in that direction. So before we write with this again, I'm going to use some micro mesh to repair this nib. And I did a short video showing how to do this repair on a nib with baby's bottom. And you can see that short video by clicking right up here. And I'll be right back and we'll see whether this pen will actually write for me. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I went through MicroMesh from 2400 grit to 12,000 grit, and now the nib writes very nicely, I'm pleased to say. Let's check the wetness. It's nicely wet, and that wasn't a problem at all before. The nib was plenty wet, and the nib is now smooth with just a hint of feedback. The way I like it and is no longer displaying that symptom of skipping on the downstrokes, which is the symptom of baby bottom. And the ink is G Urbain. Stormy Gray. It's a lovely combination of charcoal gray-black with gold shimmer. Beware if you use this ink, however, be prepared to clean the pen regularly. And that means going at the feed with a soft toothbrush to get that gold shimmer out of there. But this is a great match for this pen. And as for line variation, well, you can squeeze a little bit out of it, but it is a typically stiff Chinese steel nib. And this nib makes a 0 0.4 millimeter line, which is a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine nib on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, this is very scratchy and dry. I even tried to smooth it out, but it doesn't want to get smoothed in reverse. And for some quick writing. Yeah, the feed has no problems keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I'm typically not big on ornate designs, be they Chinese, Italian, or German. But this design is well thought out and balanced. Some ornate designs can get so busy they become an oatmeal of squiggles and patterns. Think of the late 17th and early 18th century Italian design called Baroque. 
in the Baroque style, the ornamentation became so busy that the eye had a difficult time perceiving shape and pattern. Then think of the French design style from the 18th century called Rococo, which was a refinement of the Baroque style, but with a lighter, less serious and ornate feeling. This pen is by no means either Baroque or Rococo, but Hongdian have offset the busy ornamentation of the cap with the solid bands of the barrel and the section. And the manufacturing of all this is superbly done in typical Hongdian quality style. The piston works very well and they provide a wrench for routine maintenance. The pen is heavy at 55 grams full of ink, but in the hand, unposted, the pen is nicely balanced and comfortable. I think the price of $50 US is reasonable for the kind of workmanship excellence that you find on this pen. The big butt here is my experience with the nib. And in this case, I don't like big butts. I like big butts and I cannot lie. This is one they actually sent me too. It surprises me that so much attention to quality and design can be given to the entire pen, but the nib is allowed to go out in unwritable condition. Luckily, I have the tools and the skills necessary to make this nib write properly. I'm a genius. But that should never happen in a pen at this price point. I know it happens all the time with pens that sell for three and four times this price, but it shouldn't happen regardless. If it does happen to you, reach out to your retailer for compensation or a replacement. If you buy it from Hongdian directly on Amazon, ask them for a replacement. They should make things right. <laughs> no pun intended. Forgive the pun. <laughs> what pun? Shut up, he thinks he's witty. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Hongdian for providing this pen for a review. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. watching and that's all she wrote. <laughs>